two, one. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Delusions of Grandeur. I am one of your hosts. But today we are going to go on about Alfred Hitchcock's Lifeboat film from 1944. And uh, this was uh, one of the only productions uh, that he was slated uh, to um, direct for 20th, uh, 20th Century Fox. He was slated to do two, but the second uh, one was never made uh, due, to, uh, due to the uh, probable fact that this uh, fil film in production took four months, uh, probably two months too long for the 20th Century Fox schedule. And they, uh, evidently they were disappointed uh, because he didn't get it done on time. But uh, let us uh, uh, hear what this film is about, according to IMDb, before we go into our first impressions. So, several survivors of a torpedoed merchant ship in World War II find themselves in the same lifeboat with one of the u-boat men who sunk it so um last week we went on about a film that was inspired uh, 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 by this uh, this film called life pod from 1993 directed by ron silverman uh and, but this week i figured we uh, we'd uh, we'd talk about this film the film that inspired that film so uh, what was your first impressions of this uh, quite uh old film. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I have to say I enjoyed it. Uh, it was good, and uh, well, uh, it was uh, impossible not to make comparisons to the uh, to Life Pod uh, while I was watching this one. But uh, yeah, I would say I enjoyed them both. Uh, one thing I really liked about this one is that it uh, has uh, some more humor and uh, less death than uh, Life Pod. Ah. <sighs> Uh, yeah, and uh, was this a first time watch for you at least last week? Because originally we were supposed to go on this last week. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is the second time I watched it. Uh, the first time was last week when we were supposed to discuss it, but uh, yeah. And you so, watched it in Croatian subtitles. That was kind of, uh, must have been kind of interesting. Oh, well... Uh, uh, I usually uh, do watch movies with Croatian subtitles if they exist. Uh, if someone has translated the movie to Croatian, if not, then I use English subtitles if they hopefully exist. Well, you wouldn't probably be able to say more than uh, th uh, this. Was the translation in English different or did it differ from the translation of the Croatian all that much? Well, well uh, I don't think so. I think the Croatian translation was uh, fairly accurate as far as I see. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I was introduced to this on TV. I think it was uh, TCM who a a actually uh, put it on TV for uh, uh, for um, view viewing privileges, and uh, I don't think I paid as much attention to it in detail uh, then because it was just something to be on, and I I, I think I caught it like uh, fairly like mid a movie uh, uh, when I when I saw bits and pieces of it, so. I think this is my actually first time watching it all the way through, um, at least with uh, with uh, with you, kind sir. <laughs> so um, it, it was definitely interesting, especially since I've now seen a lot of Alfred Hitchcock films. And the thing to notice about the, this particular film is that it was uh, very much done in one particular setting. Uh, it was uh, done entirely in the lifeboat 
uh, for uh, for the most part, uh, part, except for when you you see them go towards the supply ship in in the very end. I mean, you see uh, apparently a sinking of a ship, whether it's the U-boat or the American ship, we don't really know. We just see it sinking. <laughs> oh, yeah. But we have an interesting cast of characters uh, here, just like, and like you said, uh, said it's hard not to compare. Um, and we're we're doing this a little different uh, differently because we uh, we we did Life Pod first, and then we and then we went back to the uh, this film, which is the film that kind of inspired the storyline for that uh, that particular film, which that. Uh, that entire film was taken in space and it, and it somewhat had a different plot li uh, line, although there was a war going on as well there. So. Uh, yeah. yeah, there were many similarities, although uh, not everything is the same. Uh, uh, some characters are uh, more or less <laughs> the same, but uh, not all of them. And, uh... No, um, and uh, I don't think in life Pod, the newspaper report, uh, 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 a reporter, or the uh, the the reporter herself was entirely the central character. I think uh, there was an equal amount of people uh, people who were central characters in Life Pod, Ooh, but uh, but the, but the one that seems to be more prominent in, in here is Tallulah. Ba uh, 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 Tallulah, I think her na name is Tallulah Bankhead. Who plays Connie Porter, and th that's pretty much the first person we see. She's uh, she's entirely dressed like she uh, she's <laughs> going out, you know, uh, on the town or something like that. That, and she's the only the only one that uh, that uh, seems to not be tattered, uh, tattered, or or in like clothing that could uh, could have been tinged by the disaster. She, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, she's, and she act, uh, uh, she acts kind of rich because because uh, she uh, she calls the manservant in the, uh, there. What does she call him? Charcoal. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, she had that nickname for him. Did she have nicknames for the others too? I'm not sure. No, wait. I think she did. Well, charcoal ended up be, uh, be, uh, being a an uh, an African American or sh uh, uh, a black man uh, who uh, went by the name of Joe Spencer, but uh, but uh, evidently she'd been around um, Joe, uh, who was played by Canada Lee. Um, well, that's an interesting name too. I, I like that. Um, I, I like his name for some reason. <laughs> um, but uh, in, in any case, Joe Spencer uh, apparently uh, might have been like a cook on board, um, and uh, um, evidently he is the one who put her in the lifeboat. Um, and uh, but there is a another character uh, who goes by John Kovac, who's played by John Hodiak. Um, who is a tattooed sailor that apparently apparently seems to have a definitely a different view on the uh, uh, German uh, Nazis uh, <laughs> in this film. Uh, wh what did you think about uh, Connie Porter as a as a person? Well, uh, I think she was a pretty amusing character. I mean, uh, she is uh, kind of a stereotype of a character that uh, sometimes in uh, some stories can be a little annoying, but uh, in this case, I think she was uh, pretty fun, although she maybe has a little morally gray views on certain matters, but uh, in situations like this, she is... Uh, 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 defi definitely a useful one to have around. Oh yeah, I, I definitely think so. Um, she comes off as this like rich, poignant uh, character who cares only about getting her story and uh, and uh, stuff. So uh, so she's 
she's saying how she, uh, she actually caught like footage of like the sinking and the, uh, the German U, U boat tor torpedoing, and then of course of the sinking of both ships. Um, and uh, right away, away, this kind of annoy, annoys the character of, uh, of Kovac, which uh, which I think we'll just call him Kovac because that's what the, uh, they 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 re they refer to everyone as their last name, you know, uh, uh, throughout the. <laughs> Mostly, yeah. Uh, throughout the film, and I assume that's because of military backgrounds and stuff like that. Uh, 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 that, and, and we have an interesting cast of characters here too. So, um, um, after the uh, uh, the uh, the sailor comes on board, then we ha have um, what was it, uh, uh, Joe, that we come across uh, first with uh, the young nurse. Oh, uh, uh, I, I'm not sure in which order they... Oh, yeah, that's uh, right. They come across um, three more characters. Um, one of them being a nurse. The other one, uh, one, uh, one be, uh, being Gus Smith, who's played by William Bendix, um, and, uh, who is injured uh, in his leg and uh, already, uh, which... As we do comparisons in life pod, the only reason why um, the one character got his uh, uh, got his leg injured is because he was trying to weld the ship back together that they were in. It was a spaceship, so oh, he did, he uh, did, and he and he injured his leg on the on the debris that was coming from uh, from the ship, so. Uh, uh, so. As they were leaving port, now um, we have another char a character that I think was with the, uh, the nurse and uh, and Gus here. He was uh, a fellow by the name of Rittenhouse, C. J. Rittenhouse, uh, and he yeah. was played by Henry Hall. And evidently, he is a man who owns some shipyards. So I'm I'm assuming that he's kind of like the captainish type character that, uh, uh, that we see. Uh, that evidently he's uh, from a company that may have something to do with the ships that uh, that uh, were were supplied to the um, uh, Americans or whatnot. We don't entirely know whether he's part of. Uh, you know, uh, the, the person who helped birth the sh uh, ship that got sunk to begin with, you know? Who oh, he did. So, but uh, what do you think of uh, Rittenhouse uh, as a character? Oh, well, as far as we got to know him, uh, he was okay. I was kind of trying to figure out uh, who his counterpart was in Life Pod, but... Uh, I uh, I didn't manage to connect him to any particular character from there. Well, I kind of uh, I kind of assumed that he was like kind of like the the company man, you know. He, he uh, like like the older um, ge uh, uh, gentleman uh, that uh, 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 was on board the life pod sh uh, ship. Um, oh, yeah, could be, could be. Um, but but because he was a, a, a owner of the shipyard and whatnot, I, I I call him the company man. You know, someone who who oh. <laughs> who, uh, who might be uh, uh, might be in knowing of uh, of uh, you know uh, things that uh, that have to do uh, do with be, uh, the funding behind some of the ships that sail the seas. You know. Yeah. <sighs> But um, uh, what did you think of John Kovac, the sailor with the tattoos? <sighs> well, uh, he was okay. He had uh, his moments of being a little bossy, but uh, you can't blame him in a situation like that. And the whole thing with uh, his tattoos was uh, kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, the, the loves in his life. I'm surprised he didn't have one uh, that, that said, I love mother on there. 
<laughs> Is know. that a Norman Bates reference? Um, maybe, <laughs> but I mean, a mother's best uh, a, a, a friend is her, her son, or shall I say, uh, say um, a boy's best friend is his mother. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, in any case, no. Um, I, I think uh, uh, when tattoos were first started to be talk about in, in uh, films, one of them just so ha happened to be be like a heart with "I love mom" or something, uh, something like that. So, uh, if you ever got a tattoo like that, you would have been a mama's boy or something like that. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, in joke, in form, at least. So. I don't know. I I, I like I kind of like the line that Tallulah uh, 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 says in there about about tattoos, uh, uh, tattoos, um, um, uh, where she says something about I don't understand why why people need to map the, their chest like that. So uh, I, ne I sure. never I never got a tattoo myself. Never understood the reason to uh, to get it. And and I've always been told that can uh, cancer is uh, is imminent. Imi eminent it's you're liable to get cancer later on <laughs> oh. i i didn't know that uh, i don't have any tattoos either but uh, after hearing this uh, if that's true i'm pretty sure i will never get one either <laughs> <laughs> i mean I, I guess um i guess there are those who uh, who really like to map their bodies with uh, with ink and uh, uh, I guess I have nothing against uh, people who have tattoo uh, tattoos I guess uh, uh, a lot of, a lot of my misgivings about tat uh, tattoos are more more or less I don't want to endanger my health in any way way shape or form uh, yeah I, uh, I don't mind people having them if they like them but uh, yeah I uh, I'd rather not get one myself. I mean, it, they they do cost money. <laughs> uh, indeed. And I honestly think that buying movies is a hell of a lot be uh, better than buying tattoos. So. Uh, I think <laughs> I agree. <laughs> but uh, that being uh, said, I have nothing against people get, uh, getting tattoos if you want to waste your money on that. Fine and dandy. Uh, <laughs> me, if I ever got a tattoo, I would want it to be meaningful, not just going and getting one just to get one because uh, cause you uh, want to be like everyone else, you know? Uh, yeah, that's definitely true. <laughs> I mean, some tattoos are really artistic, and it, it, it's hard not to say uh, say so, uh, something about uh, about some of them but so, uh, some of them are ridiculous why would you ever get so, uh, some of the things that i see on people's bodies <laughs> <laughs> well yeah definitely if i wanted to get one it would also have to be something special i mean uh, uh, i don't mean any disrespect to anyone who uh, has tattoos and who likes them i just uh, I would rather not uh, do that myself. <laughs> well, uh, enough about tattoos. Um, <laughs> there, uh, we'll have pl uh, plenty of movies where tattoos will show up. <laughs> uh, definitely. So um, uh, next we have, um, oh, well, the nurse. Um, I believe her her name, uh, well, her name wasn't uh, Mrs. Higley. It was Alice, Alice. McKenzie. And uh, yeah. she's an interesting char uh, character too, be uh, because you know she's uh, she's the uh, the uh, the one who who pretty much says she doesn't understand why there's fighting going on, and she just doesn't get it. You know, uh, uh, why can't people just love each other and be peaceful? You know that uh, that kind of th thing. And she comes off to uh, to me as like the, the person that uh, that brings the romance and um, kind of well I kind of feel sorry for her because um, she uh, she relates to Miss Porter um, 
one evening that she, uh, of her um the uh, the man that she has fallen in love uh, or has been in love with and he was a married man yeah and i like uh, that miss porter um always uh, says oh I, uh, some of my best friends are men <laughs> or yeah. my best friend is in the navy or some of my yeah. best, some of it, my best friends are thieves <laughs> yeah, I told me something about her friends. <laughs> Some of my best fr uh, fr uh, fr uh, friends are not even with me at the moment. So, <laughs> but, yeah, that's um, definitely true. Um, uh, there is also another character, um, evidently uh, that Joe um, has brought. Uh, 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 when they come across Joe, he's swimming with a w uh, a woman who has a a child uh, uh, with her, and she's try uh, trying to sail back to the Americas to show her husband the, sh uh, the child that she has. And her child dies um, some time while they're on the lifeboat, and uh, she kind of goes a little crazy when uh, when she realizes that they have gotten rid of the body of the child. What did you think about that moment? Well, it was uh, it was very sad, uh, and uh, yeah, maybe they should have uh, watched her better after uh, knowing what uh, happened to her. They should have expected she would uh, try to do to herself what she eventually did. Well, I'm. Actually, not so sure that she uh, did that herself. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, sure that the jur uh, jur well, uh, here we are getting to him. Um, Willie um, is, is who is played by Walter Slezak, um, plays a German, um, which they came across a, a a German that had been in the water, um, a German man. And uh, it's hard for um, Kovac to understand why they would let him into the boat. He's very untrustworthy of uh, him, him. And I think a lot of naval officers uh, were untrustworthy of the Germans. In fact, they were taught to hate the Germans uh, in, in order to go up against them in, in battle. In fact, you hear some of the talk Mm. Uh, they call him a Nazi bastard and uh, th uh, things of that na nature. There was definitely a lot of <laughs> a lot of racial slurs uh, done in in and towards his uh, nationality. <laughs> mm. What do you think? Yeah. Well, uh, I think uh, the whole subplot of him was. Uh, it uh, poses a very uh, good moral dilemma. Like uh, uh, some of those characters are, are like, uh, we don't want to have him like better safe than sorry, which uh, in a situation like that is somewhat understandable. But on the other hand, uh, there are uh, people who don't want to let any human being die if they can do something to save them. And, I must say, if I was in such a situation myself, I would have probably saved him too. I uh, I would have sided with those who didn't uh, want to kill him. Uh, but uh, yeah, in the end, we found out that uh, he was a bad guy after all. Oh yeah, and uh, the reveal that he was a, a, a the German captain of the sh uh, ship. Um. By that time, uh, they were starting to tr uh, trust him a little bit mo uh, more. Uh, um, and uh, I think that uh, they kind of went through, uh, through, uh, through, you know, some natural disasters uh, while they were on board the li lifeboat. I mean, it, it, they couldn't have helped the rain. And uh, uh, I guess... Um, they couldn't have, uh, uh, have helped uh, the way that the German, um, um, well, well, we'll call him Willie. Uh, we we couldn't help how Willie was a survivalist 
the fact that he already had, you know, um, stuff to supply himself uh, uh, with. I mean, a lot, a lot of the people on board. I mean, Connie Porter, she, uh, she, she had sins of vanity. Uh, you know, she was all, all about herself at first. <laughs> you know, and uh, the only person on board that I, I really feel uh, well, two people that I felt for were um who was it stanley and uh, alice because uh stanley seemed uh, to be the man to uh, to kind of guide the sh uh, guide the sh uh, ship for the most uh, part uh, i mean gus uh, he had his rosie <laughs> oh, yeah i felt sorry for him too i i even liked the um i liked the fact that they, uh, they brought up the baseball uh, as uh something to talk about i mean sports i may not be i may not be a sportsman but i do have i i, I don't watch sports myself i i, I mean I've been, I've been to games i mean i know my father has brought me to games and what whatnot but i will not out of go out of my way to watch a game <laughs> yeah same here i admit <laughs> I mean, if my uh, father was shouting at the game in the other uh, room, uh, let him uh, let him do it. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. Um, even in a bar, uh, I mean, I mean, I can't stand going to a bar and watching the game because because everyone's shouting at, at, at each other, and uh, I've never been to uh, to a game where people just are peaceful and wa uh, watch it. And maybe. Uh, Maybe the, if the, if they didn't go on so uh, so long about uh, uh, the ref calling, you know, I mean, it it would be it would be it'd be heaven just to watch a game in peace. I mean, mm. well, yeah, I, uh, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm not into sports myself, but yeah, I do hear about. Uh, a lot of violence happening because of things like that, uh, like uh, uh, fans of uh, the teams who play against each other and then the fans throw hate at each other and even get into physical fights and things like that. Uh, I think it's uh, really unnecessary. <coughs> Here too. Um, I mean, I... If if sports eventually d uh, died, I would not care either way. But I do believe that uh, that uh, people do need something of a respite uh, to keep their mind um, busy. You know, um, sure. uh, to I I think that sport uh, sports having sp uh, sports to watch is a good thing for some people uh, people because then they are distracted from the everyday uh, day violence that goes on in, you know in the world i mean it's it's a it's a pastime that people in, uh, um, traditionally do they, they uh, uh, when they uh, when they go to uh, go to someone and say hey did you see see the game the other day it's it's something to talk about amongst your fellow peers so Ooh. Well, you have a point. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, uh, for those who are interested in the game, in the ga game, like last week's game, uh, game. If you know the points and scourge, fine. If you d uh, don't, then I guess you have nothing to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, my kind of escape from reality are movies, TV shows, uh, things like that. <laughs> Here too. I mean. Uh, I, I I'll watch movies that have to do with sports. Like uh, I know that there are classic movies dealing with sport, uh, sports, like Hoosiers and Rudy. Uh, those are movies that I uh, uh, that I know that are classic or have become classic. Even remember the Titans. That has become a classic movie. Ooh, yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, but. Um, uh, even baseball movies uh, like the uh, the uh, the Pride of the Yankees uh, that was an older f uh, film about Lou Gehrig um, and and uh, how he eventually got Lou Gehrig's disease um, in the end. Uh, so uh, so 
there are movies that have been about sports that I believe I believe have been filmed over time that uh, are worth talking about about because in our everyday lives sports w was something to talk ab about and some of some of the great baseball players and some of the great football players you know things of that nature in nature of yeah. course over where you are it's probably rugby or soccer so uh, yes the most uh, prominent sport here is uh, football or uh, soccer as you would say in the usa <laughs> so in any case uh Moving on to the sto uh, story, I know we're kind of we were kind of uh, going in and talking about sports a little bit. But, uh, that's okay. I mean, some of these have to uh, have to do with some of the, the situations here. I mean, I like uh, uh, like I said, I liked the the fact that they were talking about the sp uh, sports to keep to keep them thinking about uh, uh, about the sports instead of the fact that his leg got cut off. That's one thing that, that I can compare. To the other film uh, is that his leg uh, started to get grand green. <laughs> Indeed, uh, although I think in the life part uh, it was uh, 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 that uh, whole subplot about uh, uh, severing his leg was uh, uh, a lot more dramatic than in this one. It was. Uh, but then again, again, it wasn't. I like the fact that they gave him the whole bottle of, uh, of uh, uh, what was it, brandy? <laughs> I, I, I think so, yeah. <laughs> and, and she was like, how much should we give him? And and uh, it, 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 he was told uh, he could have like the whole thing. And she was like, all right, down the hatch. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, Definitely, um, definitely some humorous mo uh, mo uh, moments. What did you think about Gus as a as a character? Uh, well, uh, he was uh, kind of cool, and I I really felt sorry for him. Uh, and, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, after seeing Life Pod, I uh, kind of expected him to end the way he did, but uh, it was kind of a bummer when it happened. Yeah, it kind of was, and uh, the uh, the fact that uh, that you knew that it was the uh, the Kraut, the the German. <laughs> well. Um, uh... Uh, actually, I uh, while I was watching uh, this movie for the first time, I wasn't completely sure that it would be him because, uh, uh, as far as I can see, uh, his character was adapted into two different characters in Life Pod. Uh, like he was both uh, uh, the uh, he was adapted both into the blind man who was the bad guy there and this. Uh, a political prisoner guy who turned out to be innocent. So, I not, agree. Uh, yeah, so it's not every single character in this movie had uh, their counterpart in Life Pod. I wasn't entirely sure that Willy would turn out to be the bad guy, but in the end, he was. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I, I do, I do t uh, agree with uh, with you as far as the split personalities, uh, uh, as far as comparing uh, this with Life Pod. I do believe that Willie, um, the German, uh, was in f fact a caricature of like uh, the blind man and uh, the uh, the the prisoner. That, uh, and uh, I, as far as comparisons go, I like the fact that there was a moment where after they they had finally actually listened to the German about the direction in which they were to go, because they they uh, they were wanting to go towards the Bermuda, whatever mm. Bermuda, Bermuda Triangle, whether it's uh, Bermuda Islands, I, I'm not entirely sure, but I'm assuming that it was a vessel called the Bermuda. Mm, 
Uh, I'm not sure maybe they were talking about the islands, but I don't know for sure. I must admit uh, geography is not my strongest point. <laughs> neither uh, neither is it mine, but, uh, but uh, according to the German, uh, they were going in the right uh, the wrong direction and final uh, finally well uh, and I kind of liked uh, that uh, there were several people who were buying uh, to be leaders um, on this life uh, about where uh, CJ Rittenhouse was tr uh, was trying to be a, lead a leader or the the skipper as they uh, they refer referred to the leader uh, <laughs> um, and uh, I guess uh, when Kovac became the uh, skipper, what did you think of that decision? Well, I think it was fine. I mean, he had the uh, physical strength and everything that uh, uh, someone in his position should have. And uh, uh, I think it, uh, it was okay. Uh, what did you think about the back and forth of uh, uh, Kovac and Porter? Um, uh, the fact that, uh, you know, at first it seemed like he hated her kind of person. Uh, <laughs> well, that was pretty amusing. It was, uh, it was cool to see them uh, getting together in the end. Uh, I mean, nowadays it's uh, maybe a bit of a cliche of... Uh, uh, male and female character who hate each other at the beginning, uh, falling in love later. I mean, we have seen that in many uh, different stories, but uh, it was still uh, kind of fun. Oh, yeah. Um, and once she let her hair down, she was actually uh, relatively pretty. Um, oh, yeah. Um, definitely. Uh, though she had a lower vo a voice, like she was, uh, she was definitely... Uh, a little older than uh, Miss Mary Anderson here as Alice McKenzie. So, um, let's see, it's a little bit uh, uh, bankhead. I just want to see. I know that her na name was throughout. Okay, so let's see. She played in, well, she didn't have a whole a lot of career, uh, career for uh, to be honest. Uh, who loved him best? In 1918, when men betray, 30 a week, the trap, the house in order, her cardboard lover, a short film, tarnished lady, my sin, the cheat, uh, thunder below, make me a star, devil and the deep, faithless, stage door canteen, lifeboat, a royal scandal, main street to Broadway. Uh, the Boy Who Owned a Melephant, a short film. <laughs> mm. Die, Die, My Darling, which uh, I actually have that one. We'll have to check that one out eventually. <laughs> but, um, let's see, what else? Uh, oh, The Daydreamer, uh, the, the voice of the, uh, the sea witch, I guess. So, but her career stopped in 1967, where she played the Black Widow on Batman, the uh, the 1960s television series. Ooh. So. Uh, let's see. And she died on December 12th, 1968. Uh, oh, she boy. She was, uh, oh, she was born in 1902. So in 1944, she was about 42 years old. Uh, yeah. Well, she looked pretty good, if you ask me. <laughs> yeah, she did. Um, she wasn't bad looking in this film. Let's see. What, let's see who else. I was going to look up Ma uh, uh, Mary Anderson uh, in here, where where she uh, might have actually played in Mary Anderson. Okay. So she played Maybelle Merriweather in Gone with the Wind. She played 
Jean Abadie in The Song of Bern uh, Bernadette, and she played Eleanor Wilson in Wilson. So it looks like she had quite a bit of uh, a um, a career. Hmm. So she played in The Women from 1939, Mend uh, Mendelssohn's Wedding March, a short film, Gone with the Wind, Maybell uh, Merriweather, Till We Meet Again, Flight Angels, A Failure at 50, a short film, All This in Heaven Too, My Love Came Back, The Seahawk, A Dispatch from Reuters, uh, cheers for Miss Bishop, under age. Uh, Henry Eldridge for President, Bahama Passage, Henry and Dizzy. Of course, the song of Ber uh, Bernadette, uh, Lifeboat Wilson, Within These Walls, Behind Green Lights to Each His Own, Whispering City, Stage Door, a TV movie. Philco uh, a Television Playhouse, a TV series, two, one episode. Um, the Chevrolet Telly, uh, uh, Telly Theater, a TV series in two episodes, The Asphalt Jungle, The Underworld Story, Last of the Buccaneers, Hunt the Man Down, The Bigelow Th uh, Theater, a TV ser a series, one episode, Passage West, Racket Squad, one episode, Chicago Calling, One Big uh, Affair, The Unexpected TV series, one episode. The Doctor, one episode. Cavalcade of America, one episode. Schlitz Playhouse, one episode. Dangerous Crossing, I the Jury, your favorite story, a TV series, two episodes. Mystery is My Business, one episode. Treasury Men in Action, TV series, one episode. The star and the story in two episodes in that TV series. So she played in a bunch of TV series, Climax from the 19s, uh, 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 late 1950s. Uh, let's see. Oh, she played Mike Hammer, a, t a TV s a series, one episode. Perry Mason, one episode of that. The Grey Ghost, a TV series. Uh, just o jet over the Atlantic, 1959. I she pl uh, played in the TV series Peyton Place. Uh, the Travels of Jamie Mc uh, McFeeders. Lawman, My Three Sons, one episode. Look up, one episode. Oh, and uh, I guess she played the old lady in the music store in Cheech and Chong's next movie in 1980. And that was her Ooh. last. That was her last performance, I guess. <coughs> well, that was a lot. Yeah, it definitely was, and she died April sixth, two thousand fourteen. Oh, looks like she was age ninety six. That's a good a right a ripe old age. Well, yeah, true. So. Uh, um, but, um, as far as, uh, the story, uh, story, uh, goes, they're basically a, dr a drift, um, on this li uh, lifeboat and they, they end up going through a storm and, uh, the storm wipes out their, f uh, the rest of their food and their water supply, at least so they think. And, uh, and they are running out of wa water. They are running out of options. And uh, apparently, uh, uh, Lee, uh, after the uh, uh, the incident with Gus uh, Gus Smith, because after they take his leg, um, he ends up realizing that um, the German on bo aboard was hogging some water and ha had not told the rest of the uh, the crew that he had some real water to share possibly with the, uh, them so when they found out that gus smith went overboard and he did nothing to help him uh they lynched him and lynched him out of the boat so what did you think about that moment do you think he deserved it 
Uh, well, yes, I think he did. I mean, he murdered Gus intentionally. And as you said before, it's possible that he also murdered the woman with the baby, although we didn't see that happen. I mean, we didn't even see on screen how she died, so we can speculate. Well, she, here, was, he, she, uh, she was still attached to that rope that uh, Kovac cut. So, uh, uh, so, and she was tied to the chair overnight. So, who do you th uh, think untied her and pushed her overboard? Oh, oh, good point. Yeah, someone had to do that. Uh, and so it probably was him. So, they were towing a body that was underwater. Huh, yeah. <laughs> so that's why Kovac cut the rope and and let her bo uh, body go. Well, evidently she went to meet her uh, little boy John in the afterlife. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, some of those were uh, sad m uh, moments. I mean, uh, on Life Pod, uh, Life Pod had a few more people die towards the end. Um yeah. Indeed, like I said before, I'm uh, 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 I'm glad that not so many characters died in this one. Yeah, it was more subtle, um, and uh, um, obviously there was a supply a, 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 a ship, just like in Life a Pod, that they were trying to go toward uh, towards. So I can definitely see, you know, comparison uh, comparison as. Uh, but in Life Pod, that ship, uh, that supply ship, had already be, uh, been destroyed. Uh, whereas in this particular uh, 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 film, which uh, uh, they were there during the destruction. Yeah, that's different. <laughs> so um, I guess they were kind of left. We were kind of left uh, thinking that they were still adrift. Um, uh, and, uh, we assume that maybe they might have survived at the end of this film. What do you think? Well, uh, from what I understood, uh, unless I got something wrong, I think uh, they were waiting for this, uh, uh, boat that, uh, uh, bombed this supply ship. It was, uh, it was uh, someone from uh, their side in the war, and I think they were expecting uh, them to uh, show up and uh, pick them up. Correct. And uh, what did you think about about the, uh, them picking up another Ger uh, 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 German survivor? Oh, the end? <laughs> well, actually, uh, I think they did the right thing to disarm him and from what i understood they were going to tie him up and wait until someone can help them figure out what to do with him right well yeah uh, even though you just went th uh, through uh, a disaster like they uh, they did where he uh, that german didn't really care about uh, about the, uh, them he just cared about getting to where he was going and uh, i I, th I guess uh in his mind, he was just doing whatever they could to survive, and whoever was was going to drag them down and stop them from survival. You know, each person that was there was a mouth to feed. So in his mind, he was probably just trying to uh, help them survive in his own way, uh, 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 way, because he was, uh, he was friendly enough. You know, it's just if you be uh, if, I mean, the reason Gus uh, uh, Gus died is he found out that he he uh, he had water uh, uh, water and was surviving a little bit a bit a bit, a bit more, and um, he was trying to tell him not to wake anybody, but uh, but you know. He didn't listen, and uh... Uh, well, I'm uh, I'm actually not sure about uh, Willie's agenda. I think uh, 
he may have been sabotaging them from earlier because uh, he uh, uh, he was giving them wrong directions and so on and uh, uh, the it, it, his counterpart in the remake i mean in the life part was doing the same so uh, uh, I think maybe he was doing the whole thing on purpose. I think so too, and I guess I like. The, uh, and I think I was trying to uh, to uh, comment on this earlier. Uh, the fact when 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 they finally did listen to uh, the uh, the captain uh, on which direction to go, uh, go uh, Stanley Garrett, uh, who was played by Hume Cronin. Um, Ha, ha, was in the rowboat uh, or in the lifeboat talking to Alice about how they were rowing towards Venus. And I, I mentioned that, uh, uh, that. Uh, he was looking at the stars because oftentimes when sailors navigate, they navigate by way of the stars uh, to know where they are. Because if you know uh, the uh, uh, how to map your your way and navigate your way on the sea by using the stars um you're a pretty good sailor <laughs> <laughs> definitely so he was saying how mars and venus were uh, were, uh, were kind of close to, uh, together and he uh, and how how they were uh, heading towards venus now the reason why i mentioned venus is because venus was mentioned in the life pod Oh, I did. Um, oh, and man. life uh, uh, pod. Uh, the whole reason uh, why the ship was uh, destroyed w uh, was to start a revolution between the rebels on Venus and the miners on Venus, which obviously the prisoner on board the life pod was a miner at one point in time and when he realized that they were using the mining sh uh, uh, shafts as a place for, uh, for bootleggers to put put their them uh, their stuff you know yeah. uh, when he said something about that uh, uh, that kind of stuff he he became a criminal himself even though he was trying to do the right thing so <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, interesting when you realize that both him and the villain of that movie were uh, derived from the same character in this movie. <laughs> and the fact that the the people in the mining co company, uh, the uh, uh, known as that Earth Core or whatever, uh, 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 the way that 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 Venusian, the uh, the the young woman who had short hair. Uh, in LifeBot, she was mentioning concentration camps, and, and she, uh, you you saw the lashings on her her back or what uh, what what not uh, to to and I mentioned these because it, it's kind of a reference to Germans and the Nazi encampments. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, that to me ties this movie to that movie. Oh, good point, yeah. But uh, in any case, what did you think about the final product of this uh, film? Do you think that this uh, fil uh, film was a good uh, good movie? Yeah, yeah, definitely it was. Uh, and when this, uh, uh, when this uh, second uh, uh, German character appeared at the end and... Uh, uh, tried to uh, shoot them to death. Uh, I was like, I mean, uh, before he appeared, I was like, oh, good, more, uh, more of them survived than in life part, but then this one appeared with a gun, and I thought, uh, 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 oh, no, now he is going to kill them all, but uh, he didn't eventually, so uh, that was pretty good. <laughs> For sure. Um, so, um, uh, this film actually received uh, three Oscar nominations to, uh, uh, for Best Director, Best Original Story, and Best Cinematography. Uh, and uh, Tallulah Bankhead, she won the New York Film Critics Circle Award for Best Actress of the Year at the time. Whoa. 
Cool. So, um, and uh, like I said before, um, uh, uh, this was the only film Hitchcock made with 20th Century Fox. They axed him beca uh, because he couldn't, uh, he, he got this production done late. Um, and I think they lost out on using him again, uh, again when he was such a great, uh, such a good director at the time. Whew. But in any case, uh, what was you, one of your fav uh, favorite scenes from this film? So let me think. Uh, 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 I'm not sure I could uh, pick uh, 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 only one, but uh, I kind of enjoyed the, the, these scenes with uh, Connie and her humor and uh, uh, oh, uh, those uh, those funny moments about her with her talking about her friends and. Uh, 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 losing her stuff and so on, I kind of felt sorry for her for uh, <laughs> losing everything valuable she had. <laughs> well, yeah, and uh, after losing that bracelet to the fish, uh, <laughs> it, it, I mean that that was the last of her uh, possessions. <laughs> so yeah, she, in a way, her losing all of her possessions kind of humbled her a little bit yeah although she did tell uh, was it uh Kolak who she uh, said uh, you owe me a new bracelet a new camera a new practically everything she lost <laughs> yeah uh pretty much <laughs> <laughs> i i believe so um and uh i i i guess uh if i had to uh, think uh, of a few moments that uh, I I think I liked the the baseball conversation. Um, I also liked uh, the parts where um, Gus got drunk before uh, before they took his leg because that was kind of uh, kind of amusing because, oh. because he sl he slugged Kovac a good one. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, you. You crazy lug, or uh, what? Uh, 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 he, he called him a heel, so. <laughs> but um, I guess um, this is a product of its time too, because uh, because of the different um, racial uh, conflicts that uh, that I think uh, were were happening, the hate that the Americans were still showing for the. Germans and uh, their nationality, as well as the nickname uh, that um, Tallulah Bankett's character gave Joe, um, Charcoal. Um, uh, you said before the the film ha happened, you th uh, you thought that in this day and, and age, it would be ripped a new asshole. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, especially because of the racial conflicts that are going on t uh, today in this world, uh, uh, this world. I mean, you can't say black without be uh, being racist. So, mm, yeah, pretty much. Uh, but uh, what, what are we? J uh, just as some uh, it goes, I'm not entirely uh, entirely certain that there. I mean, yeah, there there is a lot of racial profiling that goes on, but uh, look at what's in the news. I mean, uh, is it um, is it our nationalities that are on TV that are shooting each other? You know, I, I mean, not to be racial or anything like that, but uh, but what races are shooting each other? You get what I'm saying? Well, I must say, I usually don't uh, watch that kind of news. It's uh, a it's, bit depressing, and I pr usually prefer to stay away from uh, such things. I mean, it's uh, something I cannot do much to change, to make things better, so I usually don't watch that kind of news, if you understand me. Here, too. It's just hard not to get, get, get caught up in the political drama of it all. I mean, my, I know that uh, 
I grew up with a very uh, uh, political fa uh, family, and I, I, I'd rather not say, uh, say which side, so that uh, so that I don't, you know, get in trouble here. But um, it, it, well, if you don't have any kind, of, I mean, as an American, you're taught about laws and taught about things to follow and uh, what our country stands for, yeah, you know. And when people start doing not what this country stands for, you kind of have, uh, 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 you kind of can't not say something about it and have an opinion about it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I understand. Uh, I mean, it's... I'm sure your country has, um, I'm sure your country has something in, in your government that uh, that you guys abide by, you know? Well, uh, uh, kind of, yeah, what you s uh, said, uh, it uh, can be kind of like that here, but I'm not sure if it's the same level of severity. Like, uh, uh, yeah, uh, we are also told if you are Croatian, you have to be like this, you have to be like that, but uh, if you are not, I guess, uh, 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 not what really happens to you except for people pointing fingers at you and so on. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you on that. Well, uh, let's see. Let's look at the, mu the music. Of uh, oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, one of the things that uh, that uh, this film was uh, well well known for, uh, for was the fact that uh, um, the music... Um, there was not a, a, a much mu a, a music involved uh, involved in the film. I mean, the, uh, oh, good point. <laughs> uh, because because it, it didn't really go, uh, have a score per se. I mean, it just just was. I mean, you didn't really hear mu uh, much music in the background, did you? Mm. Not really. Yeah, good point. I admit I wasn't uh, thinking about it while watching the movie, but uh, well, yeah. Well, neither, neither was I, but uh, let's see. If there was any mu music, the music was by Hugo Fried Friedhofer, and he was uh, a composer for Ace in the Hole, The Best Years of Our Lives, the the adventures of Robin Hood with Errol Flynn, <coughs> an affair to remember, the guns of Will Son uh, Sonnet, the, uh, a fifty episode TV series. Uh, he did the music theme for that. He did the music th uh, 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 additional music adaptation uh, for the greatest story ever told. Uh, Outlaws, uh, seven episodes of, of that. The Americans, 17 episodes of that. He d it was the composer uh, and some of the stock music for I Married a Monster from Outer Space. <laughs> uh, Zombies of Moro Moratau. Um, Love Me Tender. Uh, the White squ uh, uh, Squaw. Secret of Treasure Mountain, The Leather Saint, Duel on the Mississippi, The Gun That Won the West, Love is a Many Splendored Thing, Hell's Island, Jungle Moon Men, Pirates of Tripoli, Deep in My Heart, Cannibal Attack, Jungle Man Eaters, Princess of the Nile, The Saracen Blade, The Iron Glove, Three Young Texans, Man in the Attic, City of Bad Men, uh, Valley of the Headhunters, a blueprint for murder, dangerous crossing, power, uh, powder river, gold town ghost riders, siren of Baghdad, the 49th man, Fort Tai, prince of pirates, the silver whip, savage mutiny, the pathfinder, blue Canadian Rockies, wagon team, California conquest, brave warrior. The Thief of Damascus, Jungle Manhunt, Hurricane Island, When the Redskins Rode, A Yank in Korea, uh, Korea, The Tougher They Come, Union Station, State Penitentiary, 
Customs Agent, Captive Girl, Mark of the Gorilla, Chinatown at Midnight, Rosanna uh, McCoy, Secret of the St. Ives, Batman and Robin, from 1949. Mm. Uh, Rusty Saves a Life. Hey. So I would almost say, uh, 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 say that there are two people who have to do with the DC Universe that were in this film. I mean, Tallulah B uh, Bankhead, she played the Black Widow on the 1960s television show. The, the composer of this uh, this film was in the was part of the Batman and Robin TV series, uh, co uh, composing before the 60s television show. Oh, did. The Crime Doctor's Gamble, Bulldog Drummond uh, Strikes Back. So this guy was actually some of the uh, uh, the mystery, the the noir uh, part of film history. So he goes back way to 1929 Ooh. as a composer for uh, for fi uh, films. He was uh, he, he was the compose. Uh, uh, he was an orchestrator for the Charge of the Light Brigade. Uh, just look. At, oh, the Great Zigfield. He was a composer and additional music. He was uncredited. Last of the Pagans. Captain Blood. That's Errol Flynn, if I remember correctly. Is it? Yep. Errol Flynn. He played Peter Blood. Captain Blood. I love pirate movies. <laughs> they can be cool, yeah. But uh, in any case, so uh, on that no uh, uh, note, um, did you have anything else that you wanted to add to this film? Mm. That we did well, not have for a mention talk about. I'm not sure. I think. Uh, 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 I think I did mention everything I was uh, going to say. <laughs> well, I definitely think that this movie is quotable from time to time. Who? Uh, be, uh, because of the uh, the lines that Tallulah uh, la, uh, said pr uh, from, uh, let's see, quotes. Okay. A guy can't help being a German if he's born a German, can he? Neither can a snake help being a rattlesnake if he's born a rattlesnake. That don't make him a nightingale. Get him out of here. How about Connie Por uh, Porter saying, dying together is even more personal than living together. Huh. Uh, this one with snakes that you mentioned is... Uh, well, if you use that in real life, it would probably be rather cruel. But uh, this other one is uh, more philosophical, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and here's Gus Smith. Uh, my name is Schmidt, but I changed it to Smith. That's what I got against these guys more than anything else. They make me ashamed of the name I was born with. I got a lot of relatives in Germany, but for all I know, this guy may be one of them. I say, <laughs> throw him to the shocks. <laughs> oh, it, yeah, yeah, he did say that. <laughs> and Connie Porter, Porter with her initials are larger than the others. Was she the last or the first? Or the first. <laughs> what was her name? Hey, stop being... <laughs> uh, stop slumming. <laughs> Uh, uh, how about the, uh, this one from John uh, Kovac? The baby has a toy. Oh, oh, oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, he said, aren't you going to kill me? Aren't you going to kill me? What are you going to do with people like that? I don't know. I was thinking of, of Mrs. Higley and her baby and Gus. Well, maybe they can answer that. Oh, yeah, that... Uh... Uh, yeah, good point. When they said that, it uh, kind of did sound like they might kill him after all. <laughs> Connie, did you come from the freighter or the store club? <laughs> He's not like us. 
He's made of iron. We're, uh, we're just made uh, uh, just flesh and blood. Hungry and thirsty, flesh and blood. Yeah. I wear, looks like a lot of ice. I wish they were. They're really nothing but a few uh, pieces of carbon crystallized under high pre uh, pressure for great heat. Quite so, if you want to be scientific about it. I'm a great believer in science, like tears, for instance. They're nothing but H2O with a trace of sodium chloride. Ooh. What do you know about a ship, among other things? He just happens to own a shipyard, that's all. Has he ever been in it? I can recommend the bait. I know. I bit on it myself. Oh, <laughs> yeah. As of now, I'm Skipper, and anybody who don't like it can get out and swim to Bermuda. What about yeah, that? Yeah. I'll buy it. Suits me. What about you, miss? I'm for it. Yes, sir. Well, if the rest agree, all right, command, uh, uh, Commissar. What's the course? Ahoy there. Lady, <laughs> you certainly don't look like somebody that, uh, that's just been shipwrecked. Man, I certainly feel like it. <laughs> what are those letters on your diaphragm? Love letters. Oh, you believe in advertising. Open. Never understood the quaint habit of making a billboard out of one's torso. Stay. Three cards. I must say, you've shown the most commendable de 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 delicacy in just tattooing the initial. Not printing the names, addresses, and telephone numbers. Open. Nines. Queens. See how they are? One, two, three, four, five. Remind me to show you the rest of them sometime. <laughs> I thought everybody was killed. I never expected to see you alive. You know I'm practically immortal, Rit. <laughs> Hiya, babe. Hiya, toots. Give me a kiss, ma'am. <laughs> you, yeah. you may call me Connie. You did once during the storm, remember? You said we might as well go down together, eh, Connie? I liked the way you said, Connie. Was like a sock in the jaw. <laughs> You're a low person, darling. Obviously out of the gutter. Maybe that's why I'm attracted to you. Maybe that's why you attracted to me. Quite, quit slumming. The funny part is, I'm from the same gutter. <laughs> in a word, wow. Reminds me of an air raid uh, once that hit me in chunky. Reminds me of a slaughterhouse I once worked in Chicago. Those Nazi buzzards of tin fish ain't enough. They've got uh, 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 they've got to sh uh, shell us too. Well, folks, we're in business again. What part of the ship are you from, darling? Engine room. I was off duty in the washroom. Thanks. Caught with my, uh, my well, I was washing my hands when the torpedo snagged us. Lie down, please. What for? You'll get more comfortable. I want to take a look at your leg. Oh, well, okay, babe. Maybe you'll let me return the compliment someday. <laughs> <coughs> He's the champion hoofer of the Merchant Marines. Tell her what I'd done in Jersey City. Listen, I chopped two prizes at Roseland one year, and all the same, I'm suffering uh, something terrible from double pneumonia. I can outjive the rest of these hepcaps. Uh, hep hepcats. Even with a bum jet. <laughs> hey, look, another customer. Where did he come from? Is he a crew member? I never saw him before. N not off our boat. Dunkerson. <laughs> what do you say, uh, Joe? Do I get a boat too? Why, why certainly? Guess I'd rather stay out of this. Mm, my, yeah. baby, my baby's dead. Where's Johnny? Where's my baby? What have you done with him? What did you do to my baby? Your baby's dead, don't you remember? Ah, but uh, but it's definitely quotable. Darling, you want to live, don't you? Not with one leg. Don't be a sap, Gus. You don't understand. Sure I do, Rosie. What's a Rosie got to do with it? Oh, oh, yeah, that one. <laughs> if I lose my leg, I lose Rosie. Of course, I don't know. Uh, uh, don't know, Rosie. She uh, loves to dance. It's her hobby. It's her whole life. Put herself in uh, her place. You like to dance? Mad about it. Well, then, what's a good hepcat with one gam missing? <laughs> now, you listen to me. I don't know Rosie, but I know women. Some of uh, my best friends are women. And one of them's the, that kind of a 
what kind of a well uh, independent creature who lives her own life that's Rosie all over with a heart of gold and she gives it away <laughs> <laughs> well anyway it's an experience you may be skipper of the of uh, this lifeboat but you're not dictator or are you <laughs> but like I said uh, uh, said quotable there are many quotes you could take from this uh, film, and I think that um, you should definitely check this film out, ladies and ge uh, gentlemen. Um, mm -hmm. it, it is worth a, at least a one-time wa a watch, and uh, worth the time to watch it, just like Life uh, uh, Pod. I think each are different in their own way, and I do like to um, talk about uh, films. Hopefully you enjoyed um, our discussion here. Um, it's been, uh, been some time since I've used a lifeboat, but uh, but uh, I, hope, I hope you can uh, can, uh, uh, can see what life was like, um, you know, after a, stor a storm. And uh, once people uh, start being around each other, they start pointing fingers. And, uh, when you're in a survival uh, type uh, setting, sometimes the most human things come out of your mouth. So, um, in any case, thank you for listening. Have a great day, evening, or morning, wherever you are. And yeah, thank uh, you all for listening. <laughs> next we uh, week, I think we're going to go on about a uh, film. Um, hopefully, you don't mind this direction. But we're gonna go uh, go on about the secret life of Walter Mitty. Oh, I don't mind. I must admit, I'm not familiar with it, but why not? <laughs> <laughs> and it just so happens that it also has a sequel. Oh, well, not a sequel, a remake. Oh, cool. And uh, that one, uh, 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 that one was directed by Ben Stiller himself. So. In any case, um, thank you for listening. Have a great day, evening, and morning, wherever you are. Hopefully, you get picked up by uh, uh, by a ship sometime soon. Um, <laughs> I would sure you would like that to happen. I certainly oh. don't want to be stranded anymore. Oh, oh, uh, oh uh, picked up. <laughs> Until you met if someone really wanted a lifeboat, then they would want to be picked up. Yeah, makes sense. <laughs> In any case, <laughs> I bid you adieu, Dankeschön. <laughs>